Hello everyone, Alkanandama here, human rights activist and former NHS doctor. I wanted to share something because this week we saw the 11th anniversary of the war in Syria. And then when I look back at what I had said on the 10th anniversary, I couldn't say it better. I couldn't say it in a more heartfelt way, in a more poetic way. So I want to reshare that and bear with me. It's screen sharing and things and it's all a little technical for me, but I'm, I'm going to do that. But of course, I have to say something first because of the big changes that have taken place in that we now see everything happening in Ukraine that we have seen happening in Syria for the last 11 years. We're already seeing the orbicide, the complete destruction of the built environment, the starvation sieges, the attacks on hospitals, on schools, on bakeries, on bread lines, on water purification plants, and so on. So um, it's with horror, it's with immense exasperation it, that those of us that have watched all these things unfolding in Syria now watch all this happening in Ukraine because Putin wasn't stopped because Assad was not brought to justice Assad was not held accountable Putin was not held accountable the whole framework of international law has been set aside the 20th century was the century in which after inconceivable horrors we put in place a framework of international humanitarian law and the 21st century is the century in which we have thrown that aside and in doing so we have made all the deaths in the horrors of the 20th century pointless and, and you'll hear that again in what I'm going to share. All of us who are activists for Syria and all of my friends in Syria stand in so much solidarity with Ukraine. And we say, bring Assad to justice. I'll, I'll put a link um, in the description so you can see the film by my friends Ronan Tinan and Anne Daly about the theme of bring Assad to justice, bring Putin to justice. This should have been stopped long ago. If people stood up for Syria, we wouldn't see this now in Ukraine. So I'm going to try and share my screen and we will go over the talk that I already had given before. Hello, this is Alakananda Ma, human rights activist and former NHS doctor, here today to share my reflections on the 10th anniversary of the Syrian revolution. Many years ago, before I was born, in the darkest days of the 20th century, many of my family members were killed in what is widely seen as the most horrific and appalling event, perhaps in human history. At the time, the Jews who sought to flee were denied asylum. And those who escaped, bringing evidence of the atrocities, went unheard. Afterwards, 
when people saw the footage of the skeletally thin survivors of the twisted and broken corpses, heard of the millions who were slaughtered, the world said, never again. The world said, never again, there will be no more holocausts and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was passed within the newly constituted United Nations. The world said, never again will these atrocities occur, never again will people flee and be denied asylum, never again will civilians go unprotected. And so we came to the 21st century and at the millennium fireworks exploded in capital cities around the world and there was a sense of hope and enthusiasm and now we have come to see what never again has meant in the 21st century. Does never again mean hundreds of thousands of detainees tortured and killed in Assad's prisons. Does never again mean firebombing schools, killing and maiming little children. Does never again mean for the first time in history unleashing sarin, nerve gas on innocent civilians. Does never again mean barrel bombs falling on civilian areas, does never again mean destroying hospital after hospital and clinic after clinic and killing doctor upon doctor. Is this what never again means for us in the 21st century? Does never again mean millions of people seeking asylum, some drowning in the Mediterranean, some shivering in miserable camps, not receiving asylum, not being welcomed, not being appreciated for their aspiration for freedom and democracy. Is this what never again means in the 21st century? Does never again mean impunity for tyrants? and murderous dictators. Because this is what we have made of never again. What future is there for Belarus? Because Lukashenko knows about impunity. What future is there for Myanmar? Because the generals know they will receive impunity. Because this is what we have made of never again. Far-right governments are springing up across Europe, frightened of the prospect that hordes of Muslims different from us are seeking to come into our countries. Because this is what we have made of never again. Today itself, the mother of all parliaments the place where habeas corpus took origin. In that place, a policing act was passed, which will curtail severely the right to peaceful protest. Because when we do not defend the freedom of people far away in countries of which we know little, in conflicts that do not seem important or understandable to us, we will inevitably lose our own freedoms. Every time a child is killed, every time an elderly person is killed in Syria, it is as if my great great grandmother and my relatives are killed again because once again their death becomes meaningless. Their death will only have meaning if never again really means never again. 
let us come together, we the people of the world. The international community is failing. The UN Security Council is failing us, but there are billions of us. And if we come together and we demand freedom and democracy and human rights for all, how can we be stopped? Thank you. That's what I said then. That's what I mean now. There's, there's nothing else to say except that, like my father told me, the tyrants must be stopped. It was my father's and my mother's intention to raise children who would say no to the next Hitler. It's by doing this kind of work, like making a video like this, that I'm trying to do what they wanted. I'm trying in my own small way to say no to Putin, to say no to Assad. Please join me and let's make no a reality.